the day. Five second board has been and gone. We get the red lights on, we get the red lights out, away we go. And a good start there by Thorpe, it's uh, a poor start by Cooper and by Scott. Not such a bad start by Matt Rosewell, though he's on that same greasy side of the grid as those two cars ahead of him. Scott's in the middle of a three abreast group there, going up towards Riches, and it's just from the outside. Was that Stubbington, I think, was mm. it? The grey Peugeot, yeah. who's got through and uh, that was an impressive start from uh, from row two uh, and the, the car that's gone backwards uh, has, is, is scott so it's uh, it's thorpe that's actually leading stubbington second and cooper our pole position running third place stewart places on his uh, third engine in the month or so is there in well it was fourth now down to fifth place i think that might be phil potts that's coming through on the uh, on the inside of him there 33 car is ryan clark 26 is paul brock making up some places jason wood in the 41 uh, Red Nova going through as they turn their way through the left hand at Palmer onto the straight behind the Timbles restaurant and towards Agostini for the first time. Great sight they make. There is a car ahead of these though, that is Andrew Thorpe. There he is. Uh, but it was side by side for second with three of them there. And it's going to be Cooper, I think, who, who was uh, down on the order a little bit. Trying to come back. Lee Scott has got back ahead of Matt Rosier again. I know he's having lost out off the start. And uh, the yellow Peugeot was very, very slow away from the grid, but it's making up ground uh, oh. from is it four. Oh. Cooper went from the inside, got sideways. He now spears across the track. Thankfully, everyone avoids him because that could have been very nasty if someone had T-boned into the side of him as he was broadside across the track there. He'll rejoin alongside that yellow Peugeot. Uh, and meanwhile, it's still Andrew Thorpe leading and Stubbington second, and we've lost one off uh, the s there as well. Didn't actually get a chance to see who that was. It's a red car, it's all I saw. Paul Brock's number 26 car, yeah. So, they are heading back onto the Bentley Strait for the first time. And it's been a harem scarum first few corners to this race. Ted Cooper uh, undeterred by his big big moment coming through Hamilton he is back on the charge again there is Lee Scott he's on the charge as well because he's up the inside of Matthew Stubbington into Brundle and Nelson and the number one car goes through on the inside there but then runs out a bit wide on the exit and he almost uh, gets door handle to door handle with his championship rival there Matt Rosier so it's Stubbington second Scott third Rosier fourth in the number two Peugeot fifth is mm, Ted Cooper and or Andy Philpotts take your pick out of those two but it's a good lead this for Andrew Thorpe yeah he's really uh, made hay hasn't he? he's about uh, 200 meters ahead of anybody else which uh, is by staying out of trouble and uh, they come Cooper around the outside of uh, of Rosier can he get through inside Scott as well he can't Scott closes the door slams it in his face but quite fairly it was his line as they come up to complete the first lap. There is Andrew Thorpe in the, uh, the Citroen AX, a long, long way ahead of the rest. It's Stubbington second, it's Scott third, Cooper fourth, Rosier next up. Then it is the uh, red car of uh, Philpott. Then it's Chris Deere in the yellow uh, Peugeot and a gap back to Stuart Place, Martin Rogers and Richard Kelsall. But look at Ted Cooper trying to go around the outside of Lee Scott there. He's determined to reclaim that position because he was on pole position of course he's trying to get back ahead of uh, Lee Scott now they're on the run to the Wilson hairpin they've got Matthew Stubbington's Peugeot up ahead of them and he's done a break too late here we've seen a few cars go straight on today and it looks like they've all got that turned in and round the corner Matthew Razia quite sideways though not the quickest route that round there it has just about worked out for him though so it's still Stubbington Scott and uh, Cooper in that order with Thorpe 7.29 seconds clear at the beginning of the lap. That's a huge lead in classic stock catch terms. Um, but uh, as you say, Marcus, he, he really did make hay while everyone else was falling over, literally falling over one another on the uh, uh, first few corners. So making their way down towards the left-hander at Agostini, this uh, tight hairpin, which is has a probably more than one different line you can take. It's back where they were last time really isn't it? Sort of uh, the same little group absolutely attacking, attacking, attacking but up front Andrew Thorpe in the uh, the little Citroen which I guess probably doesn't have the torque of some of the others and that's not hindering him in these conditions. No, uh, I mentioned he's had a few wins here in the past so too in a uh, similar car Stuart Window had a win here as well in 2014 also in a Citroen AX on the same day or same weekend as Andrew Thorpe did. Look at this they're about to go three wide I think coming out of Oggies this time and on to the, uh, onto the back straight it's Scott getting up the inside there of Matthew Stubbington and the 
multiple champion goes through on the inside. Ted Cooper will try to follow him. Matthew Stubbington then closes the door and uh, Stubbington loses one place, but thankfully not more. And uh, Matt Rosier now sort of getting more involved in this again after that big moment he had up at the hairpin. Yeah, there's two pugs in that, uh, in that foursome. Stubbington, the grey one with the orange stripes over the top, but he's been overtaken by uh, Lee Scott and the XR2. Ted Cooper's trying to come around the outside into, uh, into Brundle. Is he going to manage to be on the apex of Nelson when they get there? Or can Stubbington close the door? He hops the curb to Cooper. It doesn't help his, um, his exit or the car's attitude. No, it doesn't. So we'll see what Thorpe's lead is at the end of the third, second lap, I should say. As cars make their way towards uh, Quim, Matt Rosier sort of venturing to the right-hand side of the circuit, looking at the inside. Meanwhile, you've got a battle going on just behind. That's Andy Philpotts and Chris Deer, uh, an addition to the programme, a late entry in the yellow Peugeot. But now it's uh, Cooper trying to go around the outside of uh, uh, Scott. Now that, oh, no, it was going to put him on the inside for Murray's, but that didn't really work out. He'll try and get to the drag on the straight. And while Rose has now got ahead of his 205 buddy, Matt Stubbington, and up into fourth place. Meanwhile, Andrew Thorpe's gone through. Second, third, fourth, absolutely abreast as they come over the line. And they are more than 10 seconds now behind the leader. Who's going to get into Richie's first? Well, Cooper's got his nose in front, but Scott's got the inside line. But Cooper's going to keep in around the outside, and he's done it. Ted Cooper, number four, around the outside of Lee Scott there to take second place away from him. And now <laughs> he's got to get his head down. He's nearly 11 seconds behind uh, racing to Andrew Thorpe. He goes quite deep into the hairpin, not necessarily a problem. And uh, indeed it's not. So he stays there in second. Chris Deere in his yellow car runs a bit wide, so that will allow some of the other 205s to go through. So Stuart Place in the 87 car there, who's going past the Titch Council, which Council number 89, uh, Fiesta. So there's second, third and fourth. And again, a big, big moment for, for, for Matt Rosier as he went through Palmer that time, Marcus. Yeah, he turned in and the car, just the tail just broke away. But he caught it nicely, but of course it's cost him a little bit of momentum. Uh, he's going to come back at uh, Lee Scott in a second, but it's Ted Cooper who's ahead in that group. Stubbington uh, in the Peugeot now in sight with the red car uh, behind Stubbington. That's uh, Andy Philpott's coming on strong. Broken away a little for Chris Deere as a result of Chris's moment up at the Wilson hairpin. And now Lee Scott has Matt Rosier climbing all over the back of him. So Matt really certainly needs to finish ahead of Lee Scott to try and pro prolong this championship battle. They started... Uh, third and fifth respectively on the grid. They are now running in third and fourth positions as they make their way through Oggies and up towards Williams and onto the Bentley Strait once again. Yes, Stuart Place, Richard Kelsall, a few more 205s going through. They seem to be going pretty well here this weekend, though not as well as the Citroen AX that's out front. So here's Matt to Rosier. Can I use the toe here, Marcus? Yeah, good, good um, potential here, but uh, there's very little between them, even with the uh, augmented acceleration of the toe offers for uh, Rosier. Rosier flicks to his right, our left, uh, out of the system. And there's uh, one of the 62s just gone that, around. That's Alan Dewey. Dewey. Yeah. And uh, the sister car there, Lee Scott, is just about hanging on to second, to third place, I should say, for the moment from, from Rosier. So Rosier wasn't able to use the slipstream to get through. Stubbington's trying to get back with them, just out of our sight there, but uh, the nimble handling Peugeot is looking good round the uh, quorum, I have to say, but the uh, little uh, voxel of Ted Cooper is making its escape. It is, not by huge chunks of time, but it's about eight or ten car lengths now ahead of Lee Scott's car as they come through, and that's the 33 car having a big moment. And that is uh, Ryan Clark, and he's had a spin, he's onto the wet grass again, but it, it looks like uh, it will survive and get back onto the circuit. Looks like Rosier is going to pull alongside Lee Scott here as they come along the centre straight. Ted Cooper clinging to the pit wall, interestingly. And Rosier's got his, well, uh, I was going to say his nose in front, he's got his whole car well in front now of, of Lee Scott, and up into third place. Uh, a good lap there from Ted Cooper, he's done the best lap of the race, a 255.57 marginally faster than Andrew Thorpe but the lead still 10.7 seconds as they uh, go on to lap four here with uh, three minutes plus one lap of the race left to go so Rosier now ahead oh he's gone straight on we've seen oh and so too is Lee Scott so they've both gone uh, straight on so that uh, time is both of their uh, chances other cars as well I think trying to go off more or less in uh, in sympathy um, but that means that it'll be uh, Matthew Stubbington, I think, up into third place. 
as they make their way uh, around Palmer. Now there is Lee Scott, there is uh, Richard Kelsall as they make their way through. Uh, you can see Matt Rosier right at the back there. Matt Rosier lost out more than Lee Scott there as a result of all of that. Slippery surface flag being shown by the marshals on the straight for Agostini and Stuart Place has a big moment, a half spin. Well, it's sorted out. Uh, that was just in front of Lee Scott as well. How many different sets of works Peugeot liveries do we have <laughs> in this race? <laughs> All erroneous, of course, but uh, good to see some tributes, uh, some uh, sops to history among the classic stock catchers. Yeah, very, very nicely presented cars, a lot of these. There is uh, Stubbington, so he is just ahead of Andy Philpotts now, and this will be for third and fourth places with Matt Rosier and Lee Scott having dropped back down the order. There's the 92 car of Rick Groom. He's 14th at the moment, I think. Uh, possibly a little better than that. As we have a minute and a half left to go of this race. Leaders uh, heading back towards us, but there on the Bentley Strait is Matt Rosier just ahead of Martin Rogers, number 39, after his moment up at the hairpin. Uh, Matt Rosier's moment, that was. There's uh, Stuart Place after that big moment at the Agostini hairpin turning his way through Brundle and Nelson for the fourth time and now they come out and on to the short stretch towards the bomb hole which Kelsall going pretty well number 89 in his, uh, his car there I don't think he has troubled the, uh, troubled the podium yet this season or, or, or even possibly a top 6 or a top 10 so he's going pretty well Richard Kelsall in 8th position, actually it's perhaps a little bit better than that now, just behind Lee Scott. Andrew Thorpe comes across the line once again to complete his 4th lap. With 30 seconds of the timed element of the race left to go. Let's see if uh, Ted Cooper's done anything about the 10.7 second gap this time. It has gone out by a second this time. Oh yeah, so Richard Kelsall has uh, had one decent finish during the course of this season, 6 points for 13th position, I think that would have been. Busy going into Riches there, you've got Rosier trying to go around the outside of Stuart Place and get back on terms with Lee Scott as well. So this is all where it all went wrong, a lap ago for these two. So they head back up to the Wilson hairpin. Do they break at the correct point this time? Yes, I think they do. So it's uh, Scott and then Rosier, so that's, and they're both ahead of Kelsall now. So I think this is, fifth and sixth that they are now vying for. Black and white driving standards back for the 67 car, which is Stubbington. So he's been, he's been exceeding track limits in these conditions. That's uh, not ne necessarily advisable, nor, nor particularly advantage gaining, you wouldn't have thought. So 13 and three quarter minutes have gone. There is Stubbington. Oh, what a big moment for Andy Philpotts. And again, he catches it as well. Stubbington had a bit of a slide on the exit as well. Yeah, he did. So he didn't get as well as much from uh, Phil Potts as he might have done. So it's Thorpe leading, Cooper second. 12 seconds made nearly between them. And then it's Stubbington, Phil Potts, and now Rosier. They're in fifth and Scott in sixth. So Rosier has got through ahead of Lee Scott now, which is where he needs to be ahead of him to keep the championship alive going into the final meeting. Oh, and that's uh, Paul Brock off uh, once again. He's been off a couple of times already during this race. It is difficult uh, out there, very difficult conditions for the drivers to contend with here. Thorpe though, with that one wiper, working hard. Penalty board as well, not the penalty board, but the board with the flag being shown to 67 Stubbington as I say. Uh, we sh should get the uh, last lap this time as well, because 13 minutes have now elapsed lap time in these conditions, very nearly three minutes for these cars. There is Rosier turning his way through, now he's catching Phil Potts steadily here, so this would be for fourth place. And he'll go to the outside as they go to the bomb hole, Phil Potts tries to cover that, opens the door for, for, for Rosier on the inside, but he does nothing with it. 
What does Scott have to drop, uh, Ian, if um, if he finishes here or worse? Because he may sacrifice some places, mightn't he? Well, currently his worst finish of the season is a fourth, so actually he's not gaining any points effectively from this race as things stand. Yeah, Rosier had a, a bit of a, a moment down at, uh, at Murray's, but he's back uh, on. Didn't cost him anything, really. So there's Cooper in second place over the line, and third, Rosier, side by side, fourth and fourth. Fifth. So this is uh, Rosier and Philpott, and Rosier has gone through there. It was uh, it was head at the beginning of the lap, and he's uh, cemented that move now. Oh, and another spin for Ryan Clark as well, number 33. And uh, that very nice livery is now rather rather muddier than it was. It's kind of Ari Vatten and sort of mm. Mike's peak livery, isn't it? It is. Um, so, oh, and now Richard Kelsall's on the grass as well. So we've seen, I think, more of cars on the grass in this race than we have on the tarmac, possibly. But uh, we'll forgive them for give them the difficulty of the conditions here. So there's Rosier now into fourth place, chasing after Matt Stubbington for potentially uh, third place. They're heading down towards Agustin. So they're about halfway around this final lap of the race. In towards Agostino they go, and certainly Rosier is taking time out of Stubbington, so podium's on the cards. Yep, he's uh, pretty much on the boot lid of Matt Stubbington in the grey Peugeot, number uh, 67, so it's two Rosier in that blue car, and um, he's attacking through, through Hamilton, gets even closer up ahead. Ted Cooper is about 100 metres ahead. Rosier hung out a little bit on the outside try, might try to switch back but there's not much grip on the inside I wouldn't have thought it, but there's no point doing it there because you'll sacrifice it all again when you get through Williams onto the uh, Bentley straight well, if he can get up to third place the deficit till he's got in the championship we're down to 18 points so uh, he's he just on a chance therefore of taking it to the final meeting at Silverstone but on the final lap here there's our second place car um, which is uh, Ted Cooper of course and Ted this season has had already uh, two third places, but not yet had a second place finish this season. So that would be, oh, this would be his best finish if he could make it. Rosie meanwhile around the outside of Stubbington. And I think he's just about got that done. Yes, he has. He's up to third place. But does he run two wide on the exit of the corner? No, he manages to hold on to that. Meanwhile, race leader Andrew Thorpe already heading up towards Murray's for the final time. There he is, number nine. Goes over the kerbs, not using too much of them though, because they'll be very slippery in these conditions. You can see the checkered flag there is waiting for him. So, by my reckoning, this will be his third win here since uh, 2016. Dominant drive from Andrew Thorpe to take the victory in round 11 of the Demon Tweaks Geocarmel Classics Dot Catch Championship. It looks like it's going to be Ted Cooper that's going to take second place, although Rosier now he's got past Stubbington has got closer to him towards the end. He's not quite going to be close enough to be able to take second place. So it's Ted Cooper getting his best result of the season in second. Uh, Matt Rosier gets third. Matthew Stubbington fourth. And Phil Potts in the first of the Fiestas is fifth. And the second of the Fiestas then is sixth. That's Lee Scott. Uh, with Stuart Place in the Peugeot seventh. Martin Rogers in another Peugeot in eighth place. Richard Kelsall, his best result of the season is ninth. And the next car through should be and is the number 41 Nova of uh, the PDC man, Jason Wood. He rounds out the top 10. So as far as the championship is concerned then, uh, Rosier, who also got the fastest lap of the race there, so that's a useful extra point for him. So he picks up 21 points from that. Lee Scott picks up 14. Uh, but as I say, that now becomes one of the scores that he drops. So yes, the gap with drops now is uh, in fact 19 points, 203 to Scott, 100 and, sorry, uh, 21 points, I beg your pardon, 203 to Scott, 182 to Rosier. Um, Andrew Thorpe though, he got the, the win there, so he'll pick up 25 points. So that's Cooper was second, he'll pick up 22. Stubbington was fourth, so he'll pick up 18. Stuart Place was 7th, so he will pick up 
12 points and uh, Andy Philpotts was sixth. So the top seven drivers in that race are the top seven drivers in the championship, just not necessarily in uh, in that order. Uh, Philpotts fifth place, so he picks up 16 points for that. So after drops now, we've got uh, Lee Scott 203, Matt Rosier 182, Andrew Thorpe 167, Ted Cooper 157, Stubbington 145, Place 138 and Philpotts 133. Uh, so the championship continues uh, a little bit later on this afternoon uh, and Matt Rosie hoping for another finish ahead of Lee Scott that will stand him in, in good stead for the championship. So we still have uh, five more races to come this afternoon here at Snetterton on the uh, 300 circuit. We'll have the BMW Car Club Racing Championship coming up next. Um, but uh, before that, we'll hear from our classic stock hatch drivers. But just looking at that winning margin in the end for Andrew Thorpe, 18 and a half seconds it was over Ted Cooper. And then just about three quarters of a second between, uh, between Cooper and Rosier. Uh, and then it was all reasonably close behind them, wasn't it? It was just uh, such a dominant drive from Andrew Thorpe. He got away very well at the start, Marcus. Yeah, it was remarkable, wasn't it? And uh, Thorpe's been around a few years. Of course, that car is only a 1400, uh, which goes back to what I was saying about torque. It's not as torquey. It's uh, less sensitive on the throttle than some of the 16s and uh, therefore a really well driven, well set up car that he's had for many years and has been a regular winner in, uh, was the, uh, the dream ticket today. Yep, certainly was. It, it worked out well for him and I'm sure if the conditions stay the same it will be uh, uh, again to his advantage in the second race a little bit later on. Now Andrew Thorpe has been stopped before he gets into the pit lane. I thought the Red Flag Act was repealed in about <laughs> 1891 or something like that. Yeah, so. Uh, the ah, right, they've stopped the cars going into the pit to the uh, assembly area into Park Fermi because they want to get the cars out onto the grid for the next race, which makes some kind of sense because they will have a green flag lap as well. So they're holding them there while the cars for the next race are brought onto the grid, uh, which will be the BMW Car Club Racing Championship, which we'll uh, talk about in just a second. So uh, rather than delay getting these cars uh, out there, uh, we will have uh, the uh, the classic stock catch cars. So we'll have the cars into the pit lane in a moment. Uh, we should still be able to hear from our top three, I would think, because the uh, the BMW Car Club uh, Racing Challenge cars have a green flag lap, so we can probably do our interviews while they are on the green flag lap, I would think. That will be uh, what our aim is. And there you can see all of the drivers queuing up to get uh, back into Park Fermi after the race, just as soon as all of these BMWs, and there's a lot of them, have been released out onto the circuit. They are all lined up, ready to go in. Just being held while the uh, cars from the assembly area are brought onto the circuit. So it looks like most, if not all, of the BMWs are now out of the assembly area, so that should mean the classic stock catch cars are going to be brought back in. Yeah, there we go, Andrew Thorpe's been given the uh, go-ahead to head down the pit lane. Andrew Thorpe has uh, always been a sort of front-runner in this uh, classic stock catch championship. So in comes uh, Andrew Thorpe then into the pit lane, parking by the number one board, the race winning board. And alongside him will be Ted Cooper and alongside him will be uh, Matt Rosier. Yeah, yeah. 
and uh, out of the car gets uh, Andrew Thorpe and he looks uh, pretty happy with his race victory there in the Demons Week Joe Karma Classic stock catches. So let's head down to uh, to the pit lane and uh, Matt Suckling. Thanks Ian, yeah, so Andrew Thorpe is here. Andrew, many congratulations on the victory. That was a dominant one by the looks of it, over 14 seconds I think. Yeah, uh, I started with a, an absolutely brilliant start. I was just thinking, I was thinking of uh, car trials in a field and how you really don't use any revs to get the best, you know, the furthest up the field. So that was going through my mind when we pulled up on the line and I set off just so steady away and it was brilliant. It really worked straight into the distance. And then each lap I was thinking, they're going to start catching me, they're going to start catching me. I could see them battling behind, so I thought, well, that's going to hold them up. And then, you know, each lap it seemed that I was actually getting further and further in front, even though it felt to me like I was backing off because I thought, I've got a decent lead, just take it easy now. And, uh, yeah, it just seemed to work. It was really good. And that's your first one of the year, isn't it? It is, yeah. We've not had one this year or last year. So, uh, yeah, first win for two years. So, really pleased about it. Yeah, great. Good, good stuff. Well, Andrew, good luck for race number two as well. That's all we've got time for, unfortunately, from the Classic Stock Hatch because we're ready to go for the BMW Car Club Championship for the first time today. Race one on the way.